Hello, this is Troy Nalls with TroyNalls.com, and I'm here with a good friend of mine, uh, Brian McDonald. I've known Brian and done business with him uh, for probably 15 years now, and I'm saying he is one of the has one of the most brilliant minds, business minds that I've ever had opportunity to deal with. So, Brian, why don't you introduce yourself and then tell people what you do? Hi, I'm Brian McDonald. I'm with Addy Media, and I help uh, entrepreneurs who have local businesses drive top line revenues. Okay, so when you speak of top line revenue, uh, tell me exactly what that is. Well, whenever someone has a business and uh, you have your income statement at the end of the year, the, the first thing, the top line on that income statement is what were the total revenues. And that is the part of the business, that is part of any entrepreneur's business that is the easiest to impact. A lot of people spend time on things that go lower down on the income statement. They try to tweak little things. But the areas that you can really, really drive, you really have a lot of control of, over, in fact, more control than you probably think you do, is those top-line revenues. Okay, so you've been in business for years. People, you look kind of young, but you're not as young as you look. <laughs> uh, can you talk a little bit about your background from the uh, mortgage industry uh, the, and then how we really got together, not so much yeah. on the telecom, but on the videos we were doing when people, no one was doing videos, yeah. and then those tools you developed to now what you're doing. So take about a minute or so to talk about that, even a couple of minutes, because it's very yeah. interesting. Yeah, sure. I uh, went to UT and graduated in 1989, so I'm 46, and uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, and I uh, went to New York, I was an investment banker, and then I uh, was chief financial officer of a public company. We did acquisitions, and we acquired a a, uh, a medical company, and I, I was chief financial officer. I was the youngest chief financial officer in the country at the time, at 26, at a ripe old age of 26. We sold our interest, my investment bank sold our interest, and I made a little bit of money, and I decided I was looking for any excuse to come down to Austin and uh, just get back here. So I uh, decided to develop some downtown real estate. That was back in the early 90s when really no one was interested in downtown Austin, but I kept getting reports that Austin was great, so we developed downtown real estate. And after I did that, I wanted to get back into something that was marketing related because, I, like I said, I, I, I think it's fun to drive top line revenues and do marketing for whatever twisted reason. I just think that's interesting. And so we started, my partner and I started one of the, the first online healthcare companies. And that's when I met you, Troy, because we had, we had just started working with this little company called Google. And they had this thing called Pay-Per-Click. And we needed... Uh, we need telephone support, and that's how we that's how we met. Yeah, so I was your telephone provider, and and that right. was fine. That was a small company, had three employees at the time, and then something happened. I left and didn't see you guys for a couple of years. I ah. look back, and now you have fifty, sixty customers, and you're making a lot of money developing a lot of software. Talk about a little bit about how you built that company, what it looked like, and then also talk about why you brought video in. And I keep saying video because now we're working on video five years later, uh, right. and it's right where I think you thought it was a new it yes. was when you hired me back then. Absolutely. So um, one of the things that, that um, I think happens when you're an entrepreneur is that you find things that you're attracted to, and then, um, and then you find things that, that you just have an aversion to because you get into it and you go, I don't like it. So I, I always, there's an expression that entrepreneurs wouldn't do what they do if they knew what they were getting into before they got into it. You know, so when I would get into new uh, businesses, sometimes I say, "This is not what I want to do." And so I, when I set up this, um, techno this healthcare technology company, the things that were important to me was to build something that was systems based. I wanted something that had leverage, and technology gives you leverage. And you can, and, and one, one of the best ways to leverage technology is to use video. It's a way to replicate your message. It's a direct way to communicate. And now on the internet. Uh, it's it's dominating. YouTube last week just said they had a billion, one billion unique visitors. So you've got to be, uh, you've got to be knee deep in video. And what was great about you, Troy, is that you had the, kind of the same instincts. And uh, and what was great is that we really wanted to build video back when no one was interested in video, and we wanted to make it a kind of an organizing principle. What you did for us exploded our business, and that's how we got a relationship. That's that's why I like you. You helped my top line <laughs> revenues, Troy. Well, cool. You know, and without going too deep into into that, because that's a whole hour, two hours, because I was yeah. very excited about what you guys were doing. In fact, you built a piece of software that was before Salesforce and even better 
yeah, uh, now. Yeah, 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 yeah. Uh, and so uh, s f years go by, you're out of that company, and now it seems like you could do the same thing because the technology has evolved with a lot less people. So can you yes. talk a little bit about how a company you have with 50 or 60 people, you're getting the same results with four or five people um, yes. and making more money for your clients and, and for yourself and, and, and for your lifestyle, being able to be home when your, your son gets home. That's right. That's right. That's exactly right. You know, um, you know, I think that intentionality is really important. You have to know what you want your end result to be. And one thing that, um, that, I, that was really important to me when I was building my business was finding ways to be more efficient, uh, to, be, to have more leverage, to manage my data better, and to find ways to grow faster. And so I spent a lot of time thinking about this. And um, we, what was interesting is the company that we grew ended up being really a software company. We sold that. It, you, you would think it would be the operating business because that made all the profits, but it was really the software company that was valuable, and we sold that. And so that was really terrific. Um, but when we had that software company, the one thing that was difficult is it had just a ton of moving pieces. I mean, we had developers. I mean, we had a gigantic payroll, all kinds of people that were doing things for us to develop our own proprietary software. Now, what's great now for entrepreneurs is that you can really buy off the shelf the same kind of technologies that we had for a fraction of the cost. You can get the same kinds of uh, really impactful software uh, on, on, you know, that's basically developed by people who this is all they do. They just, they just provide this one little niche. They do it on a license basis. You can pay, maybe pay $50 or $100 a month, and you can get a lot of the same kind of, kind of powerful software that, you know, we spent years and hundreds of thousands of dollars to develop. And now they're available for everybody if you know how to kind of integrate it into your business. You know, one of my favorite scenes is technology allows your vision to go forward uh, unencumbered. Uh, right. So if you know how to utilize technology, the things that we were doing five years ago with 50 people, you yes. can do it now uh, with almost no people. Uh, but right. at the same time, we just came back from Tampa. You had a, a customer in Tampa uh, that we helped. Um, and our, while there are things that we can outsource and things that we can license, you've told me that you believe that video um, has to be um, done by a professional. Right. Uh, I've been having this debate. Cameras are easy to get. They're inexpensive. Yep. You have them on yep. your iPhones. But yep. what people don't understand is it's not the camera. It's not the equipment. It's the intellect. It's knowing how to ask what question and knowing how the client or the customer thinks. So can you speak to why you brought me away from Texas to yeah. Tampa to help your uh, doctor's office there in St. Pete? Uh, and also why uh, high-quality video is important. Not quality from no, I understand. pretty pictures, but quality from the depth of the information. Yeah, absolutely. Well, so... So I, I have two comments on this. First of all, when I sit down and I work with the clients I do, they, they, typically, are high, they, they typically have a high uh, revenue per customer acquisition, and so it's really important to be competitive. So they pay me a lot, they, they pay me a lot of money for, for what I provide. But, and, and so I really try to give them a complete solution, but the one thing that I tell them, I'm very upfront, is I say, look, I can pretty much do anything. I've, I've really had the, kind of the, the breadth of knowledge to do it, but I can't do video. I absolutely can't do video. I said it's, uh, it's really something that takes, um, it, it, it almost takes kind of an artistic view of how things work along with kind of really locked down technological understanding of, of what has to happen. I don't know if you've ever seen a video, Troy, that has bad, it's beautiful video but it has bad audio. All the time. And so what do you think of the video when you see that? It looks horrible, right? Or there's a gigantic shadow or something. And, and, um, and now the way we're communicating you can really make a distinction between the people who are serious people and the people that aren't so serious. And the people that aren't so serious, they just don't take that into account. Your brand is everything. And I tell my clients, I say, look, I can't, I can't do this for you. And I'll just tell you a personal story of one of the reasons that I brought you up to, to work with my most recent, my most important two clients. It's actually a kind of a cautionary tale. Um, my first client in the Tampa area uh, kind of insisted to, I didn't insist, but he kind of strongly urged me to use a local group, and it was a disaster. It just was really bad. It, it was way overdone. They used about 10 times the, the, the amount of technology that you did, Troy, and they got a third of the result, and I'm not kidding. And they didn't follow through, and the, and the, qual the picture quality is muddy. I mean, I, it's unbelievable. And, and so when I went back to Tampa, I, I, I said, look, I, I said, I'm going to bring someone I know can get the job done. And, 
And you, that, yeah, that's right. That's <laughs> <laughs> and so, um, and so, you know, it, it's good to work with someone that you know what they can accomplish and they can do. And we built, you know, a big company doing it the way that you wanted to do it. But let me just add one more thing, Troy, is that the thing that, aside from just creating great quality content, is that you have to kind of communicate, especially when you're, my, my, my clients tend to be physicians. And so people are, that's the thing they want to know. Who, what, who is my doctor? What's he about? And Troy, the thing that you, you I, that really impressed me this past week was the fact that you got those doctors to be real people. You got them to come across as smart. You got, you helped them come across as concerned. And really, you really managed to touch upon the things that I think are important for people to make decisions. So I was, I was very happy. Well, you know, <clears throat> To that, and I tell people, I have friends who are very good at video, um, and even the, the video you showed me where they messed up, they used all the big words and all the big cameras, yeah. and they had film training, but they, what they didn't have is business experience, yes. and knowing how to ask those questions to make A-type personalities. Doctors, they're busy, and they don't think their time uh, should be wasted at all because that's all they sell. Um, and so what I think a lot of people don't understand is it's not just the video, it's the questions you ask, it's the research, it's That's getting right. to know these people and putting them in ease. And so enough yeah. about what, what I've done <laughs> uh, for you in video. Tell me why video is important as it relates to local marketing and getting new clients. Well, you know, the statistic that there's, you, there's a billion unique YouTube um, visitors now uh, that's th that to me speaks volume. I mean, if you look at the if you look the if you just look at statistics, I'm not kind of a numbers person. If you look at the the rate of YouTube views over the last five or six years, it's exponential. You know, it's 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 doubling every eighteen months or so, and I think that reflects where things are going. Um, I think if you were going to build a web website today, rather than to go find someone who can write words for you, you need to find someone with with you know someone like you, Troy, that has your set your skill set that can do things really efficiently, really high quality, and make those videos the central organizing principle of your website. So that's why I think it's so important because right now uh, the world is not hierarchical. You know, it's, it's become very flat. And so conversations are direct. And so you need to be able to have high quality conversations directly with the prospects that you want to talk to. How is that different from how doctors uh, marketed before? When you said it's hierarchy, there was nah. always a lot of gatekeepers. That's but right. now the doctors, we want to know if he likes fishing, if he likes skiing. Tell yeah, me a little bit about right. how that works for doctors and how they're adjusting to that. Well, they're not. They're, you know, the older doctors, boy, they're they're they have a, they're having a hard time adjusting to this. But the reality is that, that the way that the doctors have always operated is they have gatekeepers. It's hierarchical. They don't talk directly to people. Uh, they typically work through referrals. So it's like this closed system. But now, you know, people. It's a two-way conversation. They're getting reviewed. You know that that didn't happen in the past. So doctors are realizing they have to engage. Now let me tell you something, if doctors are getting it, if they understand they have to like get out into the public, then it's, this is really, it's really hit a kind of a, a threshold now. And um, I, I just don't think you can be an active business, especially if you're an individual and you do service business. If this isn't like a high priority for you, you're just, you're, you're not serious. I mean, you're absolutely, you're not serious, and I'm not saying that you're not a serious person, but you, but you won't be effective. You can't be effective because your time's limited, and the only way to leverage your time is to replicate how you message. Okay, Brian, you know, I'll tell you this, and, and the viewers that we have, we can do this all day. I mean, we spent hours together after, after the job in Tampa because this is what we both like to do, but I'm going to go ahead and end this, this hangout. Uh, where can people find more information about your company um, or if you even take a new clients? I, I realize that you like to work with a very specific type of client. And you have a very specific and wonderful, maybe we could do a Google Hangout on that, on how yeah. you get clients. It's very unique uh, to be able to get clients all over the country where you want to be. So, so yeah. what's the next move? Should you give them their website or do you just want to say bye to everybody? Well, uh, we're not taking new clients right now um, because we've got some, 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 uh, some big opportunities we're working on. And, but if it's somebody that uh, comes through a referral of a friend, I, I can always take time to talk to people directly if they have issues and want to talk. I'm, I'm pretty liberal with my time in terms of entrepreneurs because I know they need help. So I, I do take those kind of phone calls. I do take referrals from you. So if someone is uh, serious and they'd like to talk to me, then if they'd like to contact you, I'd be happy to have a ne kind of a next okay. step conversation. Well, I'm glad to be part of those very big things that, that you're setting up. I'm, I'm ecstatic about that. And another yeah. thing I like is that to be able to be in a position to where you're selective about 
the clients. And now that means that when I start doing classes here pretty soon, I'm going to invite you to speak to to the group of classes because this is you're the kind of person who I tell people about. You're not big on Facebook or big on Twitter. Some people nope. think you got to have all those followers, and they're missing the boat. Most of the people who are the most successful and the smartest have no online presence. And so, Brian, I yeah. appreciate your time. I really <laughs> sure. appreciate your time. Thanks for sending um, me to Tampa to do that job. Jasmine thanks you. Uh, and James right? thanks you. Tamara, all the kids, ah. the whole family thanks you. Because and and your you brother, do, right? Oh, yeah. My brother came along with me. But when, when I get a call from you, I know that once I do it, I don't have to do much else the rest of the month in the following month because you believe in real good budget. So I really appreciate that, Brian. Hey, my pleasure, Troy. Thank you.